At the beginning of the story, we see a boy going to a store. He was looking very sad and dejected while buying a thing from the store he thinks in his mind. I am sick of this instead of a triangle kimbap that has hard rice and very little content. I want a shiny warm rice with different ingredients in it. Instead of a can of beer that has a mild taste and little bubbles, I want a beer with a strong scent and the right amount of bubbles. Then he bought kimbap our beer and ordered us to come to our house. Again he starts thinking sadly while eating food. Instead of this place, I would like to go somewhere else where I can enjoy with everyone. Then we know that this boy belonged to an ordinary family. His family was very hard working. After completing his school, he studied in a good university, and then by chance, he got a job in a good company. But suddenly one day, both his mother and father pass away, due to which he goes into depression. He remains in depression like this for four years. Then suddenly he gets his job, and now he's working in a small game developing company. While thinking all this, he smells the smoke of cigarette from the direction of the window, and he goes to see who is smoking the cigarette. As soon as he opens the window, he sees a gate of a different dimension, seeing which he becomes quite surprised. Then, he gets a notification on his phone about the Seoul gate. He thinks, am I the only one who can see this gate? If this was some future gate, it would be better. But still, if this is a way to change my life, I would like to try it once. But how should I use it? Then he tries to put an item inside that gate, but that item doesn't go in. Then he gets confirmed that none of his item can go inside this gate except him. Then he thinks further that this can also happen if I went inside and could not come back. Well, it does not make any difference. Let's go. Inside. Going inside that dimensional gate, he reaches an old house, and after looking at it, he thinks that this house looks very old. All this is really very expensive. Then he looks outside from the window, and after looking at it, he likes the view of these villages very much. Then after a while, he sees a shiny paper on the side table, in which it was written about the contract of this dimensional gate. Actually, with this gate, he can go from one place to another whenever he wants. But this gate will work only two times. Then there was one more thing kept there whose name is Subspace Pocket. This pocket is connected with this gate. This is such a pocket with the help of which anything can be lifted from the earth. But the weight of the thing in this pocket should be limited. Otherwise, you can lift any type of thing from the earth. Only you, you will have to keep your right hand on that item and your left hand in the empty space. There are no restrictions on what you bring in, but the only thing you can take back is gold. That boy gets very surprised because initially he was being given 1,000 gold rupees for staying here. Then he reads the contract further in which it was written. If you sign this contract, then you will learn the language of Erman Empire. You have seven days to think about it if you do not sign it. Within seven days, then all the memories related to this dimension gate will be erased from your mind. And if due to any reason you die, then the contract of this dimensional gate will get destroyed automatically. If you want to sign it, then you will have to keep your right hand on this paper. That boy thinks seven days is too much. I would like to think and sign it. Then he signs it, as if he also learns the language of the Erman Empire. The boy is then welcomed into the German Empire and given the name Cho Ishu. Then the boy thinks, but I am thinking what I can do on this world. Will I become a noble man, or a feudal lord, or a wizard? Anyway, it does not matter. For now, I would like to stay here and stay away from small problems of my life. We see a lady saying to him, Did you not like this food? He says, No, it is not like that. I was thinking about something. Anyway, maybe this food will not be enough to satisfy me. He says that I once went to his room to check whether he exchanges all the gold for cash or not. Then, I was planning to return to that place again, but I lost my eye and fell asleep. Then I noticed one thing that I was looking much younger. My skin had become quite shiny. The color of my hair had changed, and along with that my nose had become a bit higher. Maybe money must have been deducted from my money for this face also. Then he again goes to the same village where he thinks my phone will work here. Well. I don't need to use the phone while I am here. Then he opens the window of his room and sees the view outside and is shocked because this time the view was also beautiful. Then he sees a lady in the room next to his. That lady sees him too. Ishu thinks she is a villager. Well, my eyes made contact with her. Now should I greet her? Then that lady herself asks, who are you? Ishu tells his name. Then the lady says that the house was empty for a long time. Did you perhaps just move in? Who are you? Did you get permission from the village chief? Ishu says, I am an adventurer. I am planning to stay for a week. And if I decide to stay longer, I will ask for permission from the chief then. Then the lady says to Ishu, since you are here, come and have a meal. Shu did not think that she would be so polite. 
Then he goes to have a meal with them. In the next scene, we see he is sitting to eat, but that lady gives him just one bowl of soup, seeing which he feels that this food is very simple, but looking at it, it looks delicious. Anyway, it is better to try eating here than sitting alone at home and eating beer and triangle kimbap. Anyway, I am going to stay here for some time, so I will have to get into the habit of eating here. Then he asks that lady her name. That lady tells her name is Maggie Humphrey. He further asks, Do you stay here alone? Aunt Maggie tells me my husband has gone to the bar to work and my son lives in another town. Tell me, where have you come from? Issue says I have come from. Issue says I have come from Seoul City of Korea. Ong Maggie says you have really come from quite far. Then Issue says, Now I would like to try eating this. Anyway, there is no spoon or fork here, which means I will have to dip this bread in it and eat it. Seeing the soup issue thinks that this type of soup is also sold in our city but many other types of ingredients are mixed in it. Then Aunt Maggie says, won't you eat this? Issue says, no, I will eat this also. Aunt Maggie says, eat it before it gets cold. Issue thinks the bread is a bit hard, but when I dip it in the warm soup it becomes very soft and really it tastes good to eat, but something is missing in it. Oh, black pepper. Then he says to Maggie, excuse me ma'am, do you have black pepper? Maggie gets a bit surprised. Ong Maggie he says, did you not like this food? Issue says, no, it is not like that. In our city, black pepper is put in every kind of soup. That is why I was asking. Aunt Maggie says, maybe it would be cheaper at your place, but it is very expensive here. So expensive that only the noble people here can eat it. I have never bought it till date. Issue thinks, maybe he doesn't like talking about black pepper. Then he says this bread and soup is really very delicious. There is a deep bit of corn in it due to which it tastes very good. Aunt Maggie says, don't say so much. Just eat it now. Ishu says, forgive me. But if you don't mind, can I know its recipe? Ong Maggie was making something. She says, okay, do you want to know the recipe? Fine, come behind me. Then both of them go out of the room. He thinks the air of this place is much nicer and fresher than the air of the act. Aunt Maggie says to him, come here. Ishu starts following them. Then he asks Aunt Maggie, by the way, what is the name of this village? Aunt Maggie says, this is Lauderan. Ishu starts looking nearby. Aunt Maggie says, what are you doing? Come here and see this carefully. We see some things kept there, which included corn powder, Aunt Maggie's homemade butter, Aunt Maggie's homemade butter, onion grown in Lauderan. Then Aunt Maggie tells him the process of making the soup. First, the butter has to be melted, then fry the chopped onions till they turn brown in color. Onion acts as a sweetener, so there is no need to give us any other sweet thing. Issue thinks, I did not know, it could also be used in corn soup. Aunt Maggie says next, this corn powder, I bought this corn from a local trader. He said it is a new crop, so we will not be able to get it for some time. Issue thinks it seems corn is not that famous here. Maggie says, I thought I should try making powder of this crop. Then it really works, so I made it this way only. Then eat a little more of that powder with onion. After that, give water and milk together and boil it in a slow flame. Just add this much salt. Now, it is ready. Ishu gets amazed, watching the soup being made. After the soup is made, Ishu thinks that the process of making it is very simple. But still, if I try it, it will never be so tasty. Aunt Maggie starts going inside the house with that soup. Then Ishu takes out something from his pocket and gives it to her as a gift. Aunt Maggie sees that thing and gets very surprised. It was a mirror which seemed quite expensive. Ishu says that you invited me to your house to have food, so this is a small gift from me. Aunt Maggie thanked him and then rudely handed over the mirror to Ishu. Ishu thinks, but why is she so rough? Then Ishu asks them for the way to the library, which Aunt Maggie tells him. And Ishu leaves the rest of the thoughts and moves ahead towards the library. Then we see Ishu going and seeing a girl through the window. When Ishu notices her, the girl runs away. Ishu thinks maybe she is shy. Then he moves ahead towards the library. In the next scene, we see him reaching the library. Going inside, he sees a boy with a tag sharer who is eating something. That boy welcomes Ishu. Ishu wishes good morning. And then he thinks in his mind, this man must be at least 30 years old, by the way. What is he eating? The boy says, maybe we have not met the poet before. Ishu says, I am an adventurer who has come to this village for some time. My name is Ishu. I have come from Seoul City of Korea. Then Ishu looks around the library and thinks, this is a library, but it is better than the bookshelf at my home. Are there only 50 books here? Maybe all these are rare books, but 
I am not able to understand one thing. Why is such a good man taking care of this library? The boy asks, Ishu, have you come here to see something? Ishu says yes. Can you give me a map of the Erman Empire? The boy brings a map. Ishu asks, can I borrow it? The boy says no. Only people of this village can take books from this library. You have to read them here. When Ishu starts looking at the map, that boy also starts looking at it with great curiosity, seeing which he thinks. Seeing him it she thinks, seeing him it seems that he is very worried. I will have to flip the pages carefully. If a page gets torn by mistake, it will probably cause me a lot of trouble. Looking at the map, Ishu says to the boy, this is a map. There is nothing on this except the sketch of the coastline and the continent. Then the boy says in Ermin, it's illegal to put cities or villages on the map. There that guy points at a place and says, is this Ladoran village? Ishu says to the boy, is it because of war? The boy says yes. That is why a detailed map can only be read by the royals and the military. Ishu thinks I hope there will be no war here at this time. I wouldn't like to live in this world and suffer the wrath and serve only the military people. Ishu asks that Bo if war often happens here. The man says it is not like that. Recently a wizard's family had prevented the war on our empire. So seeing this situation it does not seem that anyone would have the courage to attack our empire. Ishu gets happy and thinks in his mind. It is good that I will not have to serve the military people. Then the boy gives his introduction and says, his name is Hans. He is in charge of all the things that require strength in this village. He says to Ishu, if you are around my age, let's be friends. Then Ishu tells her age that is 23. Hans was shocked and said to Ishu, do you use any drink or lotion, etc. to look young? Because he is 17 years old, Ishu gets shocked hearing the age of Hans. Ishu did not think that he would be so young in age. Then both of them became friends. Then Ishu asks him about this food. Hans says that it is bread with raspberries on it. First, we have to cook the flatbread and leave it for a few days. Then top it up with different kinds of food on it. On this one, I used crushed raspberries. After that, Han says to Ishu, do you want to have a bite? Ishu thinks in his mind that after seeing this, it doesn't look so tasty. Then Ishu asks Hans, by the way, which is the nearest city here? Hans says, pushing the city is the closest, but it takes three days to reach there by car. Then Ishu asks, then which is the biggest city? Han says, Armenia city, but I have never been there. Some merchants come to our village from whom I heard about it. This place is the capital city of our empire. It takes more than a month to go to this city by car. When Hans hears the sound of some people coming, he thinks that the merchants have returned. He asks Ishu if he can take care of the library at this time tomorrow, because Hans has to go to meet the merchants. Ishu gets a little confused. Then Hans says that he can also get the things he needs from the library. Then Ishu couldn't refuse. Then both of them come out where we see some merchants. Ishu feels very cool seeing those merchants. He goes to tell something to Hans and sees that Hans has gone from there. We see that Hans asks Aunt Maggie, where did they go? Everyone is in a hurry. We see that he feels long to come back to his home because he had to buy something so he needs the gold. After coming home, he thinks he should take a shower. Then he thinks further that I cannot go from this world to the other world with anything. Going to another world with anything. Going to another world wearing just underwear is a bit too much. It is strange. But what can I do? But yes, it is better to take my box of gold coins to the other world than coming and going again and again. And that is why I need a subspace pocket. Then he goes to another place and takes his two gold coins and goes out to see the merchants. Then he goes to a restaurant where the merchants were going to stay. There are a lot of people there whom Ishu likes a lot. He sees Aunt Maggie there. Aunt asks Ishu, have you come to eat food? Well, you will have to wait for this. Ishu says, no problem. Then Aunt says, I will bring food for you in a while. Till then drink this, Ishu says thank you. And then he starts thank you. And then he starts thinking, if he gives beer then how will it taste? Like I had father earlier, will this taste different? Then Ant serves him beer seeing which he gets very surprised. Because he has been drinking such beer for quite some time, he does not let even a single drop of beer fall and keeps it whole. He finds the taste of this beer very delicious. He drinks it again. Then Ant comes there. Aunt Maggie says you will have to give one silver and five copper coins in exchange for this drink. Ishu gives him a gold coin, in exchange of which he gets eight silver coins and five copper coins in change. He thinks that this means ten silver coins are equal to one gold coin. 
which means the cost of one cup of beer is ours. 15,000? Then he asks, will we have to pay separately for food also? Aunt Maggie says, don't worry. You have already paid for both. By the way, is the price of beer also less in your city? Because here in our city, we get one cup of beer in exchange for two copper coins. Well, now I'm going to prepare food for you, Ishu says. Till then, I will enjoy this beer. Then, Ishu looks around. There are a lot of people. He thinks he should go and talk to some people. Then Hans comes calling Isu. Hans says, have you also come here to eat? Isu says, would you like to join me? Hans says, no, I came here to eat with my family. In our village, it is a rule to spend time with your family while eating. But my family gave me permission to go and meet the merchants. That's why I came here. That's when he gets to eat. This time, the food was pork stew with bread. He thinks I also feel like eating with my parents. That's when Hans says your food has come. Hans looks at the food and says, it is usually eaten in winters and now it is summer, but I am sure it will still taste very good. After the meal, let's go to meet the merchants. Isu says it is fine. Then he looks at the food and starts thinking, generally people keep pork like this for two days, but this can spoil it. That is why common people eat it as quickly as they can. Fresh pork juice and vegetable soup preparation tastes very delicious delicious and at the same time they have used essential herbs and salt in it, which gives it a new taste. I remember this taste. My mother also used to cook food like this. My mother used to make very spicy food, which I used to like a lot earlier, but now I do not like spicy food. While thinking about all this, he remembers his mother a lot. Ishu is done eating, Hans asks Ishu again. Mr. Ishu, what will you do now? Ishu says, I will go to see the merchants. Hans gets excited and says, it's okay, let's go quickly. Then both of them go towards a small festival. Hans says, you will find a lot of things here. Their Aunt Maggie asks the price of a mirror. The shopkeeper says, eight silver mommy Sue sees Aunt Maggie asking the price of the mirror, and he thinks I'm sure the one I tried to give her had the better quality. Anyway, eight silver is 80,000 won. If I were to sell three a day, 90 a month, then I would earn 7 million a month. Awesome. Then Aunt Maggie asks her for a cheap mirror. The shopkeeper shows her three silver wizards mirror. Seeing which Aunt Maggie also understands that this is a mirror made by a wizard. On the other side, Isu sees a man and upon seeing him, he thinks I have never seen this face here. The old man says to Isu, where did you come from? Isu replied. Isu replied, I am an adventurer from Korea. My name is Isu. The old man says it's my first time hearing such a name. It must be really far from here. Then Aizu told him it's a miracle that I came this far alive. By the way, how much does the spice cost nowadays? The old man says six gold per pound for black pepper, six gold for nutmeg, one gold for sugar and salt is two copper. Isu thinks very carefully one pound is about 450. Then with one count is about 450. Then with one key of black pepper, it's 12 gold. So it's about 1.2 million one. That's awesome. Then he asked, does that standard followed everywhere in Armenia? The old man replied, well, we can say that the price is similar here and there. Hearing all this, Izu starts making a terrible business plan in his mind. He thinks considering the transportation fee and city taxes and store rental fee, I think it's okay to sell it a little cheaper in this place. Seeing how he reacts, they must have increased the prices since they are dealing with innocent rural peasants. Anyway, the spices are quite expensive in this place. If I just find a route to sell these, I might be able to become the richest one in the Armenian Empire. If that happens, I will be done with you, Manager Park. We see that the same girl starts watching Ishu from behind the tree. Isu starts asking that old man, how much did it cost you to get the black pepper from the port? The old man replied, of course, I can't say that. Then Isu again says, did I mention that black pepper is really cheap in the place where I came from? Then Isu says, giving an evil smile, if we talk about this, I might be able to provide those at a reasonable price. Then the old man replied to the Isu that, three gold. And where is that continent anyway? Isu says that since they come here and that reduces their burden of having to go to the big city, I think they will buy it for two gold coins, right? By the way, I will ask other merchants too before deciding on the exact price. Hearing his lines then, the old man says so. Why don't you sell all the black pepper you have? Isu starts looking at the man with suspicious eyes and says, looks like you are lacking in supplies. Is that it? The old man replied, of course I am. Every time this crop grows, the royal family and the elite people buy it. Because of this, ordinary people like us are not able to buy it, even if we want to. That is why this time I could buy only five pounds of black pepper. Isu thinks, I can understand 
understand why it is so expensive. It is brought from such a far distance if they can bring even two cage of black pepper from that far. It is a big thing. Then he says, forgive me, but for today I don't have anything. Then the old man gives him a card and says, take this. It was written on the card, spy store, Colin Mugwall. The central market of a mania city, spy street, no. Five, then the old man says, if a trade route opens to your continent, come to my store, and now goodbye. In the next scene, these you sees a kid sitting. He thinks he should go and talk to that kid. He goes to the kid and asks, hey kid, do you live here? The kid says, I am not a kid, I am 10 years old. Isu says, forgive me. Then the boy asks, where do you come from? Isu says, from Korea. The kid says, liar. I have read hundred books, but still I have not heard about Korea what you are talking about. Isu says, do you know I am 23 years old and I have read more than thousands of books, but still there are many things about which I still have to know and do you think you know more than me? That boy says, I am the son of a general merchandiser, Mino strives. What about you? Isu tells his name to which that boy says, this is a very intellectual name and by the way, Seeing that you have read thousands of books, are you rich? Because in this place, thousands of books are equivalent to several hundred million one. Then Isu says, anyway, I have a question. The boy gets surprised and asks, what do you want to ask me? Then Isu gives the same mirror and says, can you check this out? How much do you think this mirror would be worth? The boy replied, as long as it's sold officially about three golds. Then Isu asks, sold officially. Then the boy says with this quality, I'm sure it's made with magic, but there isn't a seal. That means this is made by an illegal wizard who wasn't approved by the royals. Then Ishu asks, so you mean it can't be sold? I guess I should just quietly sell it. Then the boy says, yes, you can sell it on the black market. Noble families go crazy collecting unique things. So this would be an easy way out. We see that the boy likes that mirror very much. Izu says, can you keep this? The boy gets very shocked and says, really? I can keep this? But for one second, will you have any condition in place of this? Because there is no such thing as free in this world. After that, Isu asked the boy then, let me ask a question. You came from Pussing, right? Aren't there any other villages around? The boy replied, there is a big village named Rushen. That's two hours away from here, but I like louder and more. Isu asks why. The boy says because the people here aren't greedy and they also sell good quality hay at the cheap price. So the horses like it. And of course I can't forget the delicious food made by our Aunt Humphrey. He sue things in his mind. It seems everybody loves Aunt Humphrey's food. Then Izu asks, what about Armenia City? The boy says it's really a good place to live. It's just that the houses are really expensive. Isu asks, is it too expensive? Then Isu thinks, his words remind me of Sil's price. Then the boy told a hut in this village is 20 golds. And that's about the price of a horse. By the way, Mr. Isu, wait for a while. I want to give something. Then the boy gives something to Isu and says, this is our house. The first floor is a store. If you have any thoughts of working, you are always welcome. Isu asks. So suddenly, the boy says, looking at you, I can tell that you belong to a rich family. That is why I'm suggesting you here. And it looks like you will be popular with women there. But of course, you aren't my type. Then Isu replied that it was too bad. But you are not my type too. Then the boy says, I will go back to my father now. While leaving the boy tells if you get us another mirror, I will sell it for you. Isu asks you will. The boy says yes. With this quality, if we put it in an auction, it will be worth a lot. If you promise to supply us the most, we will give you the best rate. Then in the next scene is Isu back to his home and thinks, I want to go back again. He is feeling very hot so he is on the ache and thinks when will this hot season end. I just want to live in La Durenne, selling black pepper. Then he opens the fridge and takes out ice cream. He enjoys eating ice cream. Then he says that soft ice cream inside this fluffy bread and the sweetness of the cookies and cream inside and the pieces of little cookies embedded are giving a nice chewing texture. Then he becomes happy and finally decides that he will leave his job. Then he starts searching for the amount of black pepper on the computer and he sees 1 kg black pepper 10,001, which is very cheap. Then he thinks if I were to stay that I will get 2 gold per pound, means 4 gold per pound, means 4 gold per cow. I want to get 4 million won for 10 kg. 
Thinking about all this, he becomes very happy and then says, Tomorrow I will go to the office and submit my resignation. In the next scene, we see Isu going to his manager park. Manager Park tells him, I have told you a couple times already. Why are you changing the source code? You don't like it, Isu says in distress. What? The manager Park shouts and says, Shouldn't you be trying to find a more efficient way instead of just using an open source? Isu thought a pareshan hokarakata he. But that efficient source is where the error came from before. Then... Sisu starts thinking in his mind about all those things which require a lot of hard work as a programmer. Then his manager shouts and says, Hey, are you even listening to me? His manager drops some of the papers that Isu had done for work and then scolds him saying, Are you thinking of using your dead parents as an excuse to zone out like that? Isu gets surprised and thinks to himself, Is he really crazy? Then his manager continuously says, This is the problem with the brats with weak mental health. They affect other innocent people too. Then Isu makes a decision. Now he will have to resign and he resigned. In the next scene he goes to someone's room. That guy asks me to sit politely. Then Isu says to the guy, I think I have to resign for some personal reasons. The guy asks, is this because of the manager park, right? Isu tells that boy that till now I have done each and everything that they said to me. And I have also heard each and every taunt and abuse that they said to me. But now they are saying wrong things about my parents, which I'm finding very difficult to tolerate anymore. That boy says that all of us together are thinking of complaining against the park manager. He thinks so in his mind, but the CEO is only listening to our complaints. He is not able to do anything against him because the people who are supporting him are very few. This is what he says. And when we talk about his ability, he does not do that bad work. It is only because of this that we were not able to fire him. I could not even concentrate on my work while remembering what Manager Park had said. The man says, I can understand. I kept you on the job because I knew your situation. But now the situation is such that things have worsened. Well, I can understand your situation. That is why I will not keep you. Even I myself do not know for how long this company will survive. But I am hopeful that we will get poets again. He says, you are really a very good person. You should take care of yourself. He thinks in his mind, if this dimension gate was not there, then I would have to give some more years to the park manager. Then he says to that guy, thank you for making me understand. Now I want permission to leave from here. That guy says, okay. Coming outside the office, he thinks, I hope this company will run well without me, even if I go away, even then the people who are left, even then the people who are left, I believe, will take care of this company. But I'm thinking what will happen to the park manager. Well, now I have nothing to do with him. In the next scene, we see he will go to another world with both black pepper and sugar to do business. Then he says to himself, I had 41 in my bank and I had 1,001. Both together made 141, in which I bought black pepper and sugar. Now I feel scared to do new things. But now I feel scared to do new things. But now I feel scared to do new things. But now I can do anything and now nobody can stop me. Then he goes to another world and after looking at his room he says, This place is really very comfortable and I have also made a secret place to keep black pepper and sugar, which is under my bed. Then we see that he goes to Aunt Humphrey's house. Aunt Humphrey thinks that he has come to eat food, but he says that he has to show something to her and also give something to Aunt. Aunt says, what is this? This is what he says. These are barely flour and apricot seed flour and honey. I am going to make something called a mask pack. We will mix the ingredients and put them on our faces. Aunt asks all this on our face. Isu says yes. This will lighten the blemishes and give our skin elasticity. The aunt feeling so weird and say, but I don't feel like putting food on my face. Then Isu becomes happy and says this is how women in our continent take care of their skin. Try it once. Aunt agreed and wore the face mask which looked very strange. Aunt Maggie did not keep a gap at all while wearing a face mask. Seeing this, Isu starts laughing and says, Aunt, you should have kept a gap in both your eyes and nose. Then, Aunt thanked him for this. Isu says it's nothing much. In the next scene, he goes to his room and says happily that he likes this freedom very much. This is how he gets healed, and this is how he was spending his life in Seal City. Then there is a knock on the door of his house. Hans is happy. 
Izu opens the door and Han says, I have not seen you for a long time. That is why I thought you must have left, Izu says, no no. Then Han says, can you spare me some time? Would you like to join me in picking up some hops? Izu asks Hans, what is hops? Hans says it is used in making beer, and I make it myself. Anyway, how long are you going to stay here? Izu says, I am not sure. I am going to talk with the village chief first. Then Hans says he will like it if you say that you will stay for a long time. We always need manpower. He says there are a lot of things to do. Harvesting hay, feeding animals, getting water, making beer, grinding grains, and also, I have to protect the library. Then, Ishu asks Hans recently. I saw a blonde-haired girl. Who is she? Hans is surprised and says blonde hair. There is no such girl in our village. There is only one girl in this village, but she is a little weird. Then Isu asks weird, how? Then Hans told him it's been 10 years since she came here. She lives with her mother, but they don't interact much with their neighbors. Then Isu says, really? Then Hans continues saying, but they do everything they are told to do and people have to work if they want to stay in the village after all. Then Isu says, is that why you want me to go with you to pick up the hops? Hans says that this is not the only reason. If we think about it carefully, then we come to know that when we earn money, excluding taxes, the rest of the money is spent like like this. That is why when merchants come, then everything including rent collection etc. is managed by them. This is what Isu is saying. Do you consider them your wallet? Hans starts laughing. Then Isu thinks remembering the words of that kid, the villagers here only make a living that can barely get them through the day so they will take whatever you give without bargaining. It's hard to imagine this in our current society. I guess this is what it's like to live like flowing water. It's good. Both of them reach the place where they were going. Then Hans shows Ishu a fruit and says that you have to bring all the fruits that look like this. Isu takes the fruit in his hand and starts smelling it. He thinks it smells good. It smells like a mixture of grass and fruit. Then Isu says, I heard that the world without a hope would have its beer taste like shit. It's fortunate that there is hope here lost in these thoughts. And Hans tells him, Mr. Aizu, what are you doing? Then Isu says nothing. I was just thinking about something else. I just have to put this in the basket, right? Hans says yes. Then we see that they collect a lot of fruit, filling the baskets. Hans says this is enough. Isu says it finished earlier than I imagined. Then Hans says, let's go now. On the way home, Hans tells Isu the firewood is running out. Well, can you come tomorrow as well? We have to shave the sheep before it gets hotter. Do you know how? Isu doesn't say anything. Then Hans says I will take this to the inn. By the way, you must be tired. Take some rest for a while. Isu says, okay, thanks. Then Isu starts running towards his home. He goes home and takes a bath, which makes him feel really good. Then he thinks to his mind a beer would be perfect after a nice shower. If I am going to drink beer in another world, I should take some food there. Then he starts thinking about a lot of food and says to himself, I feel like eating all this. Then he starts seeing the food on his phone. He plans to take this food to the other world and eat it. After a lot of thinking, he likes a food which he orders online. After some time, its delivery also arrives. He will take the food to the other world with the help of subspace pocket. He thinks that it will be great to eat this food in the other world. Come on now, let's go to enjoy the taste of Korea in the other world. After reaching the other world, he thinks, but how can I eat this food by chance? There is not even a plastic bowl in this world. If you look closely, I have not brought any of my essential things here till now. I'll go back and get some things first. Then he brings some bowls from Korea. At this time, Hans comes. Hans says after coming inside, I was going to the door knock for a long time, but I could not hear anyone's voice from inside. Isu was without clothes, and suddenly he was stunned to see Hans. Hans says, Sorry I came inside without permission. Next time I will come inside after taking permission. Isu says, Okay. Then both of them go to the garden and start talking. Then Hans says, I've been working hard to cover up your quota while you weren't here. Isu asks work. Then Hans says the hops we picked a while ago. We have to remove the dust from the fruits so that we can make it into a beer. Since you weren't here, I did all that by myself. Isu was very surprised. Then then he said thanks. Isu was very surprised then he said thanks to himself this place is nothing like Seoul but it is much better. Then he thanks Hans and says I will also help the next time. By the way, where are you here again? Hans says do you want to have dinner with me? Isu remembers the food he had decided to eat after ordering it online and bringing it into this world. He is not sure what will happen to the food, but still he says yes to Hans. Seeing Isu's reaction, Hans starts saying to him, If you are saying yes, then why are you reacting like this? Isu says no. 
It's not that I don't like it, but it's just sudden. There is something I cooked. Hans gets very surprised and says, Do you also know how to cook? Isu says, Yes, but why do you act like this? Hans says nothing. You just look like someone who only eats food that was cooked by others. Then Isu says, I was planning to share with my Aunt Humphrey. Then Hans says, Then, let's eat at Aunt Humphrey. Isu says, Can we do that? Hans says, Of course. I will get permission from my parents first. Don't start eating until I get there. Isu says, Then I guess I will use a wooden bowl. The next scene we see that is Yu has prepared a delicious meal. Everyone is asking, what is this? Isu said that it's called roasted chicken. It's a food made by boiling chicken with different veggies. Aunt Humphrey asks lime stew. Yeah, replied yes, it's similar. Eat it before it gets cold. After everyone has eaten their share, they start giving such strange reactions that Isu begins to get extremely nervous. Isu says to Hans, you don't like it. Isn't it to your liking? Hans says, flip. This food just flipped my whole world. Isu says, what? Aunt Humphrey says to his husband, are you all right? Her husband says, I lost consciousness because it was so delicious. Then Aunt Humphrey asked to Isu this food. Did you use spices in it? Isu thinks, in his mind, Aunt Humphrey is indeed someone who has a lot of experience with cooking. That's why they caught on so quickly that I had spiced up the food. Then he says, yes, it's a common spice used in my hometown. Aunt Humphrey said, is it not your type? Hans shouts and says, it's completely my type. And Humphrey's husband says, it's my type too. Then Aunt Humphrey said to everyone, start eating now. Everyone enjoys eating it very much. The next day, morning time is shown. Isu says, all right, let's go sell some black pepper. While he goes in search of a merchant, he sees a girl riding a horse. Isu thinks in his mind she is very beautiful, seeing that the people are getting her. Is she a noble? Seeing the man standing next to the girl, Jesus thinks to himself, how cool does this boy show? That girl looked at Isu very excitedly and said, my love. Isu thinks nervously to himself, love and me. This is the first time I am hearing something like this. That girl got down from the horse. She is coming towards me. We see the girl pass Isu and go over to Aunt Maggie, who is standing behind him. We get to know that this girl's name is Rose. Rose said to Aunt Maggie, How long have you been working here? You are the reason I keep sneaking out of the house. Aunt Maggie says, Then I will have to leave this place now. Rose says, What? I might die if I don't eat the food that Maggie cooks for me every day. Aunt Maggie says rudely to Rose, I will tell you this again. I like to live my life freely, and if I made up my mind, I would have been the best chef in the royal family in no time. Then Rose says in horror, If you refuse to make my food, I will cut off that hand and take it with me. Issue thinks in his mind how scary she is. And Humphrey says, Then you can't eat the food I make anymore. Rose said to her, It means hurry up and give me the most delicious food. I bought the ingredients, so use them as much as you want. And Humphrey said, Okay, now go and wash up first. Then the girl runs away to freshen up. Before leaving, the girl says, If you add black pepper, I am not going to let you go. And Humphrey says, That's not possible. Isu, think in his mind that she hates black pepper. Han said to Isu that Miss JJ is so beautiful, right? Isu says, yeah. Then Han says, of course, she is a bit bad-tempered. Hans is just about to comment on Rose when she arrives and says, bad-tempered. But who, seeing Rose so closely, makes Han's heart skip a beat? Rose says, don't be scared. It's all good. I was furious when that rumor about my shitty temper was spread. Now it's too late to take that back. I bet that my driver played a huge role in spreading that rumor, because it's a really cunning rumor. Then she says, pointing to Isu, by the way, who's this person? Isu says, let me introduce myself. I'm an adventurer, Isu from Korea. Han says he will stay in the village for a while. Rose begins asking a lot of questions at once. Just like he first asks Isu, what is this Korea? It's my first time hearing it. Must be far away from here. Which family are you from? How much wealth do you have? Hearing so many questions, Jesus' head starts spinning. Then the same man comes there and takes away Miss Rose. Rose shouts and says, Hey, let go of me. Let me go. Isu looks at that girl and thinks in his mind what a crazy young girl. Then Isu asks, Hans, her name is Jace Rose. Hans replied, yes. You can call her Miss GJ in short. I see. Miss JJ must be very interested in you. Isu poke Hans and asks, Do you like Miss JJ? Hans replied, What are you saying? It's not like that. Mrs. Humphrey's food is really good. Even if I use the same recipe and ingredients, it doesn't taste as good as hers. Then the swan becomes very happy after seeing a man and says that, Mr. Joseph, I am here. The man his name Joseph, he says. All right, Hans, get me a beer. 
Then Hans brings beer, Isu asks the beer price. Hans says we don't charge money today because it's Miss GJ's day after all. Uncle Joseph says to Isu since we are here, let's have a drink together. Isu says, yeah, of course, by the way, I heard him call you Mr. Joseph. And I am Isu, sir. If you don't mind, may I ask what kind of business you do? Uncle Joseph says I sell spices in Hermania City, Isu asks by any. The chance do you know Mr. Mugwall? Uncle Joseph says you mean Colin Mugwall. Uncle Joseph says you mean Colin Mugwall. Of course I know him. We are very close. Isu says how did you know him? He came here last week. Uncle Joseph asks, did he perhaps sell some black pepper here? Isu replied yes, but he said he only got a little of it. Uncle Joseph says, come on. Isu confused and says any problem. Then, Uncle Joseph says, I am the owner of the biggest spice shop in Armenia. I couldn't even get a grain of black pepper because the Meditz family swept it all. Now wonder the Meditz bathe in pepper water. There's a rumor that they even use pepper perfume. Isu thinks it sounds like the other way around. Then Uncle Joseph asks, That man Mugwall, how did he even get a little of black pepper? Isu thinks in his mind, come to think of it. Isn't it what Hans ate before? It wasn't that good back then. Would it be any better with the beer? Thinking about all this, he starts eating something, which is very hard, and he does not like it at all. Then Izu says to Uncle Joseph, I don't think Miss JJ actually likes the black pepper though. Uncle Joseph says, don't even say it. There's a big trouble in pucing because of that. Isu asks Joseph uncle what? You were planning to set a fire on the carriage that's carrying black pepper. Uncle says it was pretty hard to distract the knights. Isu says wow. Just then Rose comes there. Rose tells both of them. Don't you both of them. Don't you both think that you should not talk about me behind my back. He suddenly gets scared. And Uncle Joseph says to Rose. Of course not. Come and have a seat. Have a drink too. Rose tells Uncle Joseph how about we stole that carriage. We will earn a lot if we succeed. Then she picks up Izu's beer and drinks it. Rose asks Isu, do you want this beer back? Izu says, I don't want it. Rose asks Isu to answer the question she had asked earlier. Then Isu says, my father was a scholar and my mother was just a regular housewife. I was traveling after graduation from an academy. The Rose says, that must be why you looked rich. So since you have enrolled in an academy, you aren't just a commoner, right, sir? Rose suddenly changes her expression towards Isu. Then Isu says, in our continent, even the commoners can enroll in an academy. Rise asks, really? Isu says, yes. Then Rose asks, what about women? Isu replied that women can enroll too. After that, Rose says, then, we will run away to that continent right now. Then his bodyguard says, don't even dream about it, miss. Then Maggie prepares food for them and brings it to them, which makes Rose very happy. Rose is about to go to eat food when her bodyguard interrupts her and says, I can't let you eat something that looks suspicious. I have never seen this type of food before, Rose says. Then should I starve? You really want that, don't you? Then she used to eat it silently. She enjoys eating this food so much that she feels like she is in heaven. Maggie says I will explain about the food. Rose suddenly says, wait, I will explain. The soup has a taste of soft cream. That's a mix of veggies, butter, and milk all together. The texture of the barley popping inside my mouth feels so refreshing, and the scent of truffle mushroom is added, making it luxurious. And this, it's a food called potato, and it's also my first time trying it. It's somehow crumbly yet soft and tasty. Isu gets very surprised seeing Rose's taste sense here. Rose says, of course, it was magic. I spent some money on some wizard bastards. I did well, right? Uncle Joseph says, yes, you did really well. Issue thinks in his mind it looks like she isn't really fond of wizards. I wonder how the soup tastes. It tastes like clam chowder soup. It's delicious. But it wouldn't have been easy to harmonize the taste of the potatoes and the clams. She made this with ingredients she had never seen before. She's great. Is don't overreact and sit down. I said that because it was so delicious. Then she looks at something and asks, what is that? Aunt Humphrey says, cabbage is pickled in boiling water with lemon juice, raspberry juice, and bay leaves. I also put sugar to give you when you arrive. Rose gets very excited and says, I love you, Maggie. Everyone will suspect me if I kidnap Maggie, right? Her bodyguard says, if you want, I can kidnap her for you. Rose says, hey, don't say that out loud. In the next scene, issue says, then since we are full now, Let's go sell some black pepper. Then he comes out and sees the night view, which he likes very much. He thinks it's definitely different from Soul Sky. He goes to Uncle Joseph's house to sell black peppers. Uncle Joseph is very surprised to see so many black peppers. Uncle Joseph says, how did you get that? Isu says, I bought it from my hometown. Then Uncle Joseph says, I will buy them all. Isu sauce. 
I have about 20 pounds. Uncle Joseph says I will give you three golds per pound. Is you thinks in his mind, then a total of 60 golds. It means six million won in cash. He is very shocked. Then Uncle Joseph gives him cash. Isu says, but isn't it uncomfortable to bring such a huge amount of money? Uncle Joseph says, that is why we hire merchants. We were just lucky this time that we met Miss GJ and her people along the way. There would be no bandits who are stupid enough to attack people accompanying the Medit's family. Next morning, when Isu wakes up, he feels much better. He says so this is what rich people wake up to. But it kind of feels awkward to have a lot of money, because people normally use three gold a month for living here. So, how much should I spend? Thinking about this, he starts looking at his wallet. Then Isu does decide, shall I go have a look at the market first? Then he comes to the market and goes to the candle shop and asks the price of the candle. The men say oil candles are five copper per pound and wax candles are two silvers. Isu says, give me four pounds of oil candle. Then a girl comes there, seeing whom Isu remembers that this is the same girl who used to live next to Isu's house. That girl had come to buy fish. The shopkeeper says, that's an expansive fish that requires magic to catch it. So we only get the stock if someone orders it. The girl says then, I would like to order some. Shopkeeper says, you need to pay five silver in advance. It will take about two months for me to come back. Is that okay? Isu was shocked and he thinks in mind five 500,000 won for some fish. The girl says then, just give me one cooked red herring. The shopkeeper says the total amount of two copper. The girl says, wait, I will go get a container. Isu thinks in his mind, I guess I was wrong about her being a blonde. In the next scene, Rose comes to the market and starts calling Isu. Isu says, Miss JJ, did you come here to buy something? Rose says, I was looking for you. Isu. Then Rose gets scared and says, would you go on a walk with me? Isu says, okay. In the next scene, Rose asks, I heard that you sold black pepper to Joseph. Isu says nervously, did Mr. Joseph say that? Isu think in his mind it would have been better to keep that a secret tough. Rose says no. I just met him in the morning and I could smell it. Isu thinks his mind smells it. Isu thinks his mind smells it. I think we could say she is sensitive to black pepper at least. Isu says, actually, I really like black pepper. So I bought some of it from my hometown and I sold them here to get some money for transportation. Rose says I don't understand why people are crazy for such a thing. Isu thinks because she is just sick of black pepper or does she really hate it? Then Izu says, but I like them. It's really delicious when used on ramen. When black pepper is used as a topping on spicy and sweet ramen soup. Rose asks, are you eating something? Isu replied, no, it's nothing. Maybe the reason you hate it is because guy just uses it excessively. Rose says, it's not that kind of problem. I don't care about that. It just makes me sick when I just smell it. Rose gets very angry and everyone asks her to be calm. Then Rose says, sorry, I have been a bit on the edge nowadays. Isu says, it's all right. Then Rose says to Isu, you are also some kind of a noble traveling around while hiding your true identity, right? My eldest brother is also traveling to gain some experience. Isu says so. Did you say that you wanted to study? Rose says no. I want to inherit my family's business. After that, Isu says, even if you can't inherit their business, can't you at least get a store in the capital? If you talk to your father, Rose says no, it won't work. My father is planning to get me married into a wizard family. You know, wizards are the descendants of elves, and people serve elves like a god. And even the families who are married into the wizard families are praised saying that they were chosen by gods. So for that honor, he is going to marry me into a wizard family. Isu says, it must be hard for you for an arranged marriage. Then Rose says so. Take me to your continent. I can offer you 5,000 golds, Isu says. I understand how you feel, but would you be all right in a foreign land with no family members? Then Isu gets emotional and says, one day, I suddenly lost my parents and got lost. The saying that time is the medicine was all a lie. The more time passed by, the more I missed the days I spent with my parents. Rose says, it looks like your parents are good people. Isu says, yes. Then Rose says, actually, my parents are good people too. It's just that it made me think that they are eventually the same as the others. She continues his line. It's not important to them whether there is something I like or hate. They just want me to live up to the standards the adults made. Then Rose again says, well, my house is about four days away from here, so you can visit sometime. Isu says, okay, after I get used to this place. Then Rose says, it would be better if you kidnap Maggie too on your way there. Isu says, I guess I should rather not go. Rose says, I will give you 5,000 golds. Isu says, wouldn't it be better? 
better to give Aunt Humphrey that. After the conversation is over, Rose leaves from there. Then Isu sees an old man there and he goes to talk to him. The man knows Isu's name. He asks Isu, are you going to stay in this village? Isu says so, you knew me. I should have visited you first. Sorry, I am late. Actually, this man is the head of the village. Then the old man says it's okay. So go ahead with your thing. We are already like neighbors now. Isu says okay. That's it. So can I just live here? Isu gets very shocked. In the next scene, we see a car coming into the village. Then Maggie shouts and says, old men. Maggie gets angry and says, where the hell have you been? Oh my God, you got a kid now. We see some people arriving there, bringing a baby with them. Then Maggie says the lady is the baby healthy. Then the lady says, yes, he's a perfectly healthy boy. Maggie gets emotional after seeing the baby. Then we come to know that she is Maggie's son and daughter-in-law. Isu feels very good seeing this. In the next scene, we see Hans coming to Isu's house. Isu says, what is it? You need some more firewood. Hans says, no, let's go see the baby. Then both of them go to see the baby. Both of them think that the baby is very cute. Then Hans says, Mr. Isu, I need to tell you something. Isu asks, what is it? Han says a noble is trying to buy our village. Isu asks seriously, what do you mean by that? Han says, I mean our village can be sold at any moment now. Isu says, what? Isn't that a serious problem? Then the baby starts laughing, seeing which Sisu says it's not as important as this situation, right? Han says, I guess so. Then in the next scene, Isu brings Hans to a different place and asks him, by the way, the thing you mentioned earlier, isn't that a serious problem? Han says, what? Which one? Isu says the thing you told me about a noble. Han says, ah, that. Actually, it doesn't have much to do with you because you are a traveler and you can leave at any time. Isu thinking in his mind that the lines kind of hurt me. Then Han says, anyway, there is something I wanted to give you. He gives me some books and says, it's one of the nobles I like. It can help you better understand this place. Isu says, thank you. Then, in the next scene, he comes to Korea with the help of the gate. Looking at his budget, he starts thinking about what he can sell this time. Then he remembers the girl in the market who is buying fish. Then he goes to the market at night to buy something. He sees a lot of food items and feels like eating them, so he eats them to his heart's content. Then he thinks, let's have a walk to digest the food. Then while walking, he reaches the fish market and seeing so many fish, he becomes very happy. When he sees a fish, it looks just like a hands. Then he sees the same fish that the girl was buying that day. Shopkeeper says, do you need some mackerel fish? Isu says yes, but please remove the organs. The shopkeeper says okay. Isu buys a lot of that fish. Then he goes home with so many fish and thinks it's been a while since I ate some proper mackerel fish. Then we see a type of sauce called esamjang. Isu says they don't have esamjang sauce there, so let's make some tasty sauce with esamjang sauce. He continues things in his mind. I learned this when I was studying abroad. And lastly, if I put the nuts in mix, then it's done. Then he collects all the things to eat the fish and says I took some barley just in case, because porridge is more common than rice in this place. Then Isu remembers what her mother had said. She says controlling fire is essential when cooking rice in a pot. You should fry the outer layer when frying a fish so that the oil will come out and prevents the fish from sticking to the pan. Isu gets a little emotional, remembering his mother's words. In the next scene, he goes to the house of his neighbor. The girl's mother opens the door and asks who is it. Isu says I am Isu living next door. That girl's mom says hi. I am Mesa. But what brought you here? Then Isu says I just realized that I didn't introduce myself properly. So I decided to treat you to a meal. Then the girl comes and asks her mother what happened mother. Her mother says Mr. Isu just moved into the house next door. Then she tells Isu this is my daughter. Her name is Hyan. Both mother and daughter are quite surprised that Isu is suddenly asking her to join the mail with him. Then Isu says I saw your daughter in the market looking for some mackerel fish. So I went to the neighboring village and bought some, as I remembered that. If it's alright with you, may I cook it? That girl's mother says sure. I wonder how it tastes. Isu says I hope it will suit your taste. Okay then, let's eat in my backyard later. In the next scene, we see him cooking fish with great fun. He thinks I should fry the fish like this, to make it crispy on the outside but soft on the inside. He is done cooking the fish, which looks very tasty. The three of them sit together to eat. Isi says, this is steamed cabbage, but a piece of mackerel fish along with some sauce on it. Then wrap it and eat it. That girl's mother says to Isu, did you live in a coastal village before coming here? Isu replied, well, somehow. Yes. Her mother eats that fish and then after eating, she says you have a talent for cooking, especially this sauce. It's my first time tasting something like this. 
It's really delicious. Isu feels very happy to hear his compliments and says, I'm glad that you liked it, and now I want to try too. He finds it so tasty after eating it. He thinks he is in the ocean. He thinks his mind about the cabbage's sweetness and the barley's texture suit well. But still, this part of the fish is the most delicious one. That girl's mother says people who know how to eat should start eating from here. By the way, you should throw away the bones. Why would you eat those? Isu thinks somehow. They don't seem like any ordinary mother and daughter. After eating, the girl says to Isu, thanks for the meal. I will clean the dishes and return them later. Isu says it's okay. I will do that. That girl's mother says let her be. She just wants to repay you somehow. Then she holds Isu's hand and says thank you so much. I will treat you to a meal someday too. Isu says okay, call me anytime. A scene of a few days later is shown. Isu thinks it's been a month, he further thinks. I get very tired doing all that work with Hans. Just then Hans arrives there, then Hans arrives there, then Hans arrives. Jesus thinks that Hans has come to call him to do that work again. Isu asks, in a very weary tone, what are we going to do today? Hans says it isn't for work. Would you like to go to Lucian village with me? He is surprised to hear the name of the new village, but then he says yes. Hans becomes very happy. In the next scene, Isu starts vomiting profusely due to traveling on such a dangerous road. He thinks I should have taken meds for motion sickness. That was one murderous road. Then Hans says there is someone I have to meet, so I will go that way. Isu says, okay, let's meet at this spot after about an hour. I will be at the pub if it gets too late. Han says, okay. Then he goes to meet someone. Isu thinks that he can take advantage of this opportunity to do some shopping from this village. Then Isu goes to a fabric shop and asks the shopkeeper, what kind of fabric is this? The shopkeeper says, you are really observant. This is a new kind of fabric called cambric. It's commonly used for handkerchiefs, curtains, and clothes. These are pretty popular among the nobles. Isu says it's really soft, by the way. How much for it? The shopkeeper says one gold each. Isu says, okay, then give me two of those. The shopkeeper says anyway, where are you going to use these? Isu says, baby diapers. The shopkeeper was very surprised. In the next scene, Isu is about to go to another place when he sees a swordsman holding a heavy sword. Isu thinks in his mind, I want to try raising that sword. The way that swordman looks at Isu, Isu gets scared. Then he sees Miss JJ going from there. Miss JJ also sees him. Miss JJ also sees him. Miss JJ asks Isu, what are you doing here? Isu says, I followed Hans here. By the way, were you just passing by this place, right? Rose says, it's not that. I came out to observe. Haven't you heard the news? Aizu asks what news? Rose says the new noble buys this land. They will be neighbors of my family. That's why I came here to observe. Anyway, what are you bringing around the town like that? Isn't that the cambric cloth? Isu says yes. Aunt Humphrey got a grandson, so I wanted to give her a gift. Rose gets shocked after hearing this news and she says what? Then I won't sit still either. She asks Izu to follow her. Then both of them go to a shop where Ria shows him soap and many other things. Then she says, I would like to give her more, but then Maggie will refuse to accept it or tell her that I will visit soon and that I would like to congratulate her. Isu says I will, and if you hear any important news about the village, please tell me. Then Rose says the people in Lauteran must be worried too, aren't they? If the new nobles buy the land in that village too, I have to get Maggie out before that happens. Isu thinks her eyes don't seem normal. Then she says, you think I am obsessed, right? Whatever this can't be helped. Then she calls the waiter to give her a special meal. Isu thinks his mind is a special meal, Rose says normally. Every inn has a special meal for the nobles. Their special meal arrives. Isu doesn't like the food at all, Rose says. Try it. Izu says thanks for the meal. Then he eats the food, and after eating it, he feels like vomiting because the food taste was too bad. Raya says smilingly, what do you think? Isn't it tasty? Try the bread too. Then he comes home with the Hans in the next scene, and he is just thinking about eating it and says it's really killing me. Now I understand why Miss GJ is obsessed with Aunt Humphrey. I know that Aunt Humphrey shouldn't leave Lauder no matter what. Then the next scene we see Isu returning to Seal City with the help of the gate. He hurriedly opens the freezer and thinks I am sure there is some plum syrup in there. He gets a lot of relief after having a few drinks. After that, he says something chilly and fresh is the best when feeling full. Now I feel better. Then he thinks while looking at the laptop anyway, is there anything else I can sell other than black pepper? I am kind of getting sick of selling black pepper. Even the subspace pocket is a waste to only use for black pepper. Then something comes to his mind and he starts searching for something. 
Then we see the scene a few days later. Isu is trying to grow some crops by digging the soil. He thinks there are other things I can do instead of selling things. If I grow these myself, my stock would be much more than the quantity I can bring from Korea. Then Hans comes there and asks Mr. Isu, what are you doing? Isu says, just wanted to plant something. Hans asks, what are you planting? Isu says, do you remember the soup on Humphrey cooked when Miss Jeju come? The veggies in there. That's called potato, and I am planting those. Isu continues saying, it's easy to cook, quite delicious, and has a lot of uses. Hans says, okay, so invite me too someday. Isu says, sure, I will cook you some food called potato jean. Hans asks, potato jean? Then Isu says, yes, it's made by grinding some potatoes and deep frying it like a pancake on a frying pan. Hans says, that's a promise, okay. Isu says, I will keep my promise as long as these grow well. After that, Hans says, by the way, the merchants have arrived. Let's go together. Isu says, okay. In the next scene, we see the same kid to whom Isu gave the mirror. His name is Mino. Isu recognizes him and Mino is very happy to see him because Izu remembered him even after so long. Then Mino says the mirror was sold for five golds. Do you perhaps have more of those? Isu says, I have about five more. Then Mino says, I will take it later. Then Mino goes away from there. Then Izu thinks if Aunt Humphrey has made sausages today, I am wondering how tasty it will be to eat. I wanna eat too. Just then, Hans comes there and gives some food to Isu and asks him to eat it. Isu looks at the food and thinks it looks similar to salami. Then he eats that food which makes him feel very salty. Hans asks, don't you like it Isu? Isu says nervously, it's a bit salty, but I think it would be better if I ate this alongside some other food. Han says we have no choice since it has to be preserved for a long time. It will go bad quickly if we don't use at least that much salt. Then Aunt Humphrey comes in with some food. She says to Hans over there, stop talking and help me serve the food. Han says, okay. Isu says, looking at the food, there are only sausages and bread for today. Then he thinks I am sure it will taste good since Aunt Humphrey made this. Then he sees some people sitting in front of him eating food. At the same time, Hans calls him, who is at the dining table with his family. Hans invites him to have dinner with his family. Hans' family also happily invites Isu. Hans' father says to Isu, Hans' father says to Isu, I have heard a lot about you. Then everyone says, thanks for the meal. Isu eats the food and thinks it still tastes all right when I eat this with bread. Scent of the fermented meat and this chewy texture. Is this similar to salami too? Then while eating, he starts thinking about food in his mind. Then he asks anyway. I don't see Miss Mesa and Hyan. Han's mother says I heard that Mesa isn't feeling well nowadays. Isu was getting shocked. Then the Han's mother gives some food to Jesus and says, Can you take the leftover food to your place? Isu says of course. Then when he starts leaving from there, he hears a lot of shouting and fighting. When Isu hears the voice, he understands that it is the voice of Hyan and his mother's fight. Then Hyan comes out of the room in anger. She and Isu come face to face, but Hyan doesn't say anything and goes away in anger. It is then that the mother comes out to call him, and then they start coughing up a lot of blood. 